What's up guys Isn't and welcome it? back to Beyond to Blue. The Twilight Zone. I'm following Andrea's family down to the Seamounts where I hope to observe them hunting. Arena has been testing our samples and is worried about a harmful algal bloom being somewhere nearby. So I am to keep an eye out for that. Check. I'm also keeping an eye out for more turtles. I know they're out there, ready to dive. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be going pretty deep today, and we're gonna be going to the sea mounts. I don't even know what that I'm means. I'm in and okay. And we're streaming. Hello, everyone. Welcome, or welcome back. I'm diving near a sea mount region, also known as the Twilight Zone, because it is just beyond reach of the sun. Mm. And we'll be taking some questions live, so be nice. We'll also be testing a playback system to interact with whales. This is so peaceful, but also creepy. You've got to think, this is the brightest that it gets down here. The sun just doesn't go this deep. And at nighttime, it probably gets even darker, so. A little bit creepy. Definitely get some, some weird animals. Want to hear and something cool? So do I. Plants and stuff down here. I'm hoping that buoy can send a little message to our humpback friends. That's right. Andre is going to serenade some humpbacks. <laughs> well, not me, but using a song I generated from other recordings. Cool. Let's go ahead and try to detect where we're going today. We've got an unknown creature off over there about 75 meters away. We've got a singing whale over there. We've got a sensor alarm over there. So I'm thinking, I mean, the whale's the closest, but let's go over here first. And hit the whale and the other thing on the way back. I wish we had a depth meter. I wish, I wish we could like take a look at our watch or something and see how deep we are. It's nothing but us and some terrifying predators down here, that's for sure. That deep sea exploration. Hundreds and thousands of animals down here that we've never encountered Another before. Another leatherback turtle, Andre. And feasting on some moon jellies. Ooh. That is odd. It is not the same one we saw before. It looks bigger, but let me zoom scan it to be sure. Got lots of moon jellies around here that we can scan as well, but let's focus on the big guy. Gonna have to check his markings, see if he's the same one. We can run the sample in the lab, but I am sure this is a different one. Do they typically travel together? And wouldn't it be surprising to find two this far off course? Yes, it would be. And yet, here they are. Welcome back, turtles. <laughs> Enjoy your beautiful moon jellies. Okay, have a nice time snack. to see if any humpbacks respond to our song. Jordan wants to know how you will know. Great question. If we have recorded him before, we'll see if the influence of our song affected his. Scientists believe whales from one region can influence the song of whales from another when they mix. Interesting. It sounds like he might be imitating it a little bit. Check his rear end here as well. Hey Andre, we've recorded a song from this one before, right? We have. How quickly can you compare his two songs? Well, I need to wait for his song to complete at least one full cycle. And how long is that? Mm, 20 minutes, maybe more. Wow. Wow, that's a long, slow ballad. Homie spitting that heat, that fire. He's got bars. So we've got a signal alarm over here. It's going to be our last thing. Let's go see what's going on with this. Feels good to be back. It's been a couple days since we posted this. It's a short game. I'm pretty sure if this isn't the last episode, there'll probably be one more after this. I just wanted to finish it up. Obviously, our focus right now is The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2 coming out and stuff, but I don't like to start things we don't finish. I'm awfully good at finishing early, if you know what I mean. Dana Squid. It looks like they're hunting... Lanternfish. Well called, Arena. We'll make you a sea witch yet. I'm sorry, a, a what? Let's scan a few to pick up their hunting behavior. Here goes. 
These squid are weird looking things. Alien looking. Face only a mother could love. So they have like their main pointed from Denver, head and nose. To know if they eat each other. Some they get do. the flappy things. I think this one was upset he missed out on his prey. Got that like glowing mouth looking thing. I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. Unlocking some new behaviors and stuff. It's so weird seeing the robots down here with the flashlights. Freaks me out every time we see it. Ooh, look at that hammerhead down there. Just sneaking. Got this little guy, a comb jelly. Making our way to our next buoy. Just slow and steady, baby. Slow and steady. Saw some comments in the last one, you guys comparing this to House Flipper is like how slow and relaxing it is. We're gonna get back into House Flipper soon. I actually, I have, I have a House Flipper episode that we still need to upload. I just uh, been uploading so many other things. Like, I, I wanna record more, but I still have one just sitting on my hard drive I need to upload. It's the second half that the last house we left out on. Looks like we've got two more potential directions to go here. Sensor alarm. Okay. That's just a little bit concerning. Let's go see what this is about. Our live stream ended pretty abruptly. We didn't even sign out. Great. Of it. I've been waiting for this. I have just activated your UV light. First of all, don't mess with my suit when I'm diving. Secondly, you spoiled my surprise. Okay, we want to zoom scan this guy. And then change to violet and zoom scan him. Swell sharks have developed biofluorescence to communicate with each other. Their eyes have special adaptations for the UV light. Now you can see what a swell shark sees. That's what I'm talking about. Spider crabs. And we're gonna find another shell shark here. Swell shark, is that what it's called? I'm finding lots of spider crabs. We need a swell shark though. Is this a, I think this might be one up here. We got them all over the place, here we go. All right, so let's grab him. We can zoom scan him. Get the white light and swap on over to the UV light. Next, nice. you can try the black light I installed in your sub. You did not. You did install it in your dorm room back in the day. <laughs> your wife showed me pictures. Well, uni was a good time. That's disgusting. What am I looking for here? Oh, one of our sperm whale tags must have fallen off. Andre, you really need better glue for these. I don't use glue. I've tracked down the tag. It's in a cave. I wonder how it got in here. I don't think it came off of a shark, if that's what you're, you're asking. Oh, what the? Why? <laughs> An octopus. Uh, are you okay? Other than getting inked in front of a live global audience? You know, you might want to get that off you. It will probably attract predators. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, that's not what I want to hear. All right, we're gonna continue on this way. Predators are attracted to ink. I would think it would be the opposite. Isn't the ink like the defensive mechanism? I guess it kind of makes okay, it- last boy of the dive. How are you feeling? Makes Chances it known that they're there. out until the end of the dive. Good. Hope of seeing if our humpback song had any effect. Well, you know this, but for the viewers, science is not magic. It takes patience. I'd like to believe in a little magic. Sperm whale's talking the baby. Is that Andre over there? Let's go find out. So I guess the live stream is still going on. We haven't really been talking to him and there's no thing up in the top right. 
Sperm whale. I think it's... Yes, it's hunting. Oh, it's hunting. First time we'll be able to document it with Andre's technology. I'm gonna get these guys here and then we're gonna zoom scan it. Try to record the sound. While it's hunting. Okay. We want to change up our our light here. I guess it doesn't matter. Come on, come on, and then the buzz. I got it. Nice. Raj from Mumbai wants to know what's the buzz. I think he was making a joke. Got it. But what is the buzz? How is it used? We're not entirely sure, but definitely associated with being close to prey. This is just a warm up. The real fun will come in the. We're going deeper? Zoom scan for tag and bio sample. Of what? Andre. Andre. One of these guys? Oh, a baby. Oh, there's no way these little ones are thousands of miles off course. Right, Andre? Give him a minute. Right. Let's scan a few of these to get their gender. There's a tiny tag here. Andre? That's so adorable! Chen from Shanghai wants to know why you care about their gender. Well, their sex is determined by the temperature of their nests. Warming beaches wiped out the turtles in this region. Believe in a little magic now, Andre? I may just start, but let me check on that tag first. Look at that behemoth! Oh, wow. Glad we didn't miss this. Coming up from the deep. They're vertical. They must have been hunting down past the rift. I think we found our spot for our first deep dive. Mirai, check out that one closest to you. What's that on its skin? Not sure I can catch them. They're headed to the surface. It might just be a scrape from a ship strike. Yeah, let's hope that's all it is. Could be a great white or something. Let's end it here. They swim vertically a lot. I didn't I didn't know that. Like they they bob there sometimes, they go straight down, they go straight up. At least we've seen a lot of that in this game so far. Interesting. I know it seems like Andre worries about everything. But I really understand where that comes from. Everyone's seen the pictures, but I can tell you, it was really tough to be doing hands-on work when we were losing entire species. For me, it was the whales. But for Andre, it was the turtles. I stayed to help him. Several of the other scientists did as well. By then, only Andre's protected nests were the ones producing turtles in the region. That's sad. We all figured that the population was going to collapse, and eventually it did. large man spend day after day carrying tiny turtles from the nest to the water. It inspired us to stay. Andre's a good man. I mean, coming back now, it feels like another world. Andre is not an angry man, Arena. He's just a man who gets angry when he sees people say it's too hard or that they don't care at all. I don't like her. I don't like her at all. The message Andre here. Hi, Mirai. Sorry to miss the post-dive brief. I've been listening to our humpback recordings for hours and got myself in a kind of funk. Actually, I started listening to the humpbacks and then switched to Miles Davis. <laughs> anyway, I don't see any clear sign that our playback influenced any of the other whales yet, but I just know we're on the right track. I'm sorry to be in such a mood. Don't know what to make of those turtles or what's going on with our sperm whale family. Right. Catch you in a bit. He's feeling some type of way. Obviously. Try to stay positive, but not necessarily in the best spirits. Day 12. Spent the last five days on an endless series of depth tests of Andre's deep diving suit. Guess he doesn't want me to implode on the live stream. I do hope it's giant squid proof, though. The mapping drone located a brine pool near where Andrea's family has been hunting. That is, before it went AWOL. 
Ready to dive. I mean dive. We're going deep and we're going hard. Oh, this is terrifying. I'm in and okay. Are you sure I can't talk you into another test dive at this step before we stream? Enough test dives. It's not like I'm doing a spacewalk. It pretty much looks this like that. Probably could. Are we gonna talk about suit crush depth again? I think we can probably roll. Starting the live stream. Welcome back, ocean friends. Tonight, I am deep. Midnight zone, no light from the surface deep. Tonight, we're using Andre's lure drone to mimic the Atolla jellyfish to lure large predators like the giant squid. <laughs> it's certainly not all my tech. I'm building on years of prior research. Don't forget our mission to the brine pools. Oh yes, Arena will fill you in on that later. Absolute pitch darkness everywhere you look. I mean, you might as well be in space, right? That's, uh, that's essentially what's going on here. Look at this guy. Are you kidding me? Really? Looking like a Pokemon out here. Got another one over here. What was his name? Let's get a name here. Atlantic Football Fish. Pretty sure I caught some of those in Animal Crossing. The football fish in there? I don't remember. Okay, Andre, how do I find the Lyra drone? Look for blinking red lights in the water column. Lure fish, lantern fish. Found your red lights. No need to get too close. You can activate the lure from there. Andre, have you done this before? I haven't, but others have. How long until we can expect the lure to attract a predator? It's hard to say. It's a big ocean. But if you lose patience, I would find some real Atola jellyfish. I have a feedback system set up to improve the lure as you scan them. Of course you do. For those watching, we will be scanning these Atola jellyfish to make sure Andre's lure matches the real thing. It does, but it can always be refined. Not much confidence in humanity, but plenty in himself. <laughs> Got the jellyfish scans, though Andre doesn't need them. In truth, they should improve the lure. I would not waste your time. Getting a few impolite comments on the screen pointing out that giant squid don't feed on Atolla jellyfish. They're right. Actually, the Atolla puts on this light show when under attack in order to lure creatures big enough to eat their attacker. It might have some useful human applications. <laughs> I think we need more Atola scans to approve the lure. Okay. Whose idea was it to live stream this particular dive? I am glad I can't see the comments. I would agree. Those dirty commenters like always this. think no, they know I'm what's up. I'm not going to try my grandmother's accent on a live stream, but loosely translated, it means... Just kidding, I love you guys. If you get bored waiting for a giant squid, you can always go to a brine pool. That's a pretty specific saying. I noticed that these Atolas were already making before you swam close. Most likely a sign that they have detected predators in the region that threaten them. Are we the predator or is there something else out there? Because we can't see it if there is. That's the main issue. What the fudge? Ah, that gave me a chill. <laughs> he said nope. Yeah, I think I I'm... know how much you enjoyed that, but do you mind if we check out the brine pool before we check on our whale camp? I think I'm good on this. Let, let's stay away from the, the squid. This is... <sighs> what the fudge? Hey, is that another one of your grandmother's sayings? No, but she often used this one. Hurry up and collect my specimens for me. What an expressive language. It's no giant squid, but I promise you, you won't have to wait to find it. Hmm. <laughs> A At long last, welcome cucumber? to the brine pool. I know it's really a salt lake under the ocean, but it looks more like a witch's brew. I have been teasing Arena, but a brine pool is a diverse micro environment within the ocean. It has its own ecosystem. Really? Each one is unique. So that means the microbiology is unique. 
and could hold groundbreaking solutions to human problems. Each time I take new samples into a lab here on this ship, it's this magical discovery moment where I tingle all over. I fund my own research so I can pursue what I know to be important. And people ask me, how much money are you going to spend to collect some bacteria at the bottom of the ocean? If these bacteria hold the cure for a disease that relieves even just a small amount of human suffering, how do you put a price on that? Is that a hagfish? Nice. Giant squid. Gotta find another one of those guys, and then we gotta collect two more samples along the ground here somewhere. These guys are plenty weird looking. We had two samples down here near the red. Might be able to find more. Yeah, this microbiology lady's talking about how she does this to tingle all over. I could think of other ways. But I'm capable of that. The less time we spend down here, the better. I'm looking for one last little sample that we can snag. See something glowing over here. Hello, beautiful. Down at the ocean floor. Oof. Let's go check out our whales. Gonna start heading up. Just swimming, dude, it's seriously, it's like you're in space. All right, pushing you away, point. Sperm whales are back on the hunt. Look for the drones. They will seek out the sound of the sperm whales and then idle nearby. We hope that today, Andrea's tech will make it possible to document how a sperm whale hunts the giant squid. Please tell me we're gonna see a sperm whale eat that squid. That would be pretty incredible. Got one there. And one over yonder. Let's go tag some sperm whales so we can eavesdrop on their hunting. One of our viewers wants to know if there is a problem with the link since the waypoints keep appearing and disappearing. No problem. The drones are in stealth mode, so they will only track the whales by sound. I better swim fast. We'll keep good watch over you. Our camera off. What just happened? I think the squid knocked the camera right off. I had that camera feed in full screen on my visor, and for a second, I thought it was lights out for me. Sounds like a good time for the sub to pick you up. Live stream out. That was terrifying and amazing at the same time. Are you kidding me? We just watched a sperm whale eat a giant squid. All right. We've got three new three new movies here. Let's watch these guys. The energy from our star flies through the universe, through our atmosphere, and hits us at the ground. But now, when we go underwater, the ocean properties of water are like pure blue filter. So it's gonna filter out all these other wavelengths except blue. As you go down further, it's primarily blue, blue, blue till 700 meters. And at that level, there's still faint photons of sunlight in the blue range. And we call this the twilight zone. And there, animals are still perceiving a tiny little bit of our sun's energy. Below this, it's gone 24 seven darkness. And it turns out that there's a ton of color vision down in the deep, so it's like they're making enough light down there to be able to be satisfying all the eyes of the deep sea creatures. So it's not this totally dark world down there. It's still light. It's just the animals are making the light rather than the sun. That's so weird. We've designed all this technology to kind of satisfy our visual hardware. As I started looking at other animals, they have totally different hardware. 
and I've been looking at everything through these silly little primate eyes. We have to overcome our humanness to jump behind the world of a shark or another creature and see the world from their perspective. We found a biofluorescent shark, and it only sees right at the blue-green interface. So it's really just tuned to a very similar spectrum to the environment it lives in. That's what we were this just scanning. This fluorescence was creating greater contrast for the shark. It's like this endless well of information. We're at the very tip of the iceberg. I love that we're actually learning new stuff with this game. Like, I, I can appreciate this. With a little help from my friends. Aww. These animals travel thousands of kilometers navigating open oceans that have no physical landmarks. They have that inert ability to find their way. Baby leatherbacks. They're only sharing our beach for a short point in time, but they need protection because man has brought an ancient species to near extinction. I got involved at a time when hostilities were very real. People came with guns and machetes to poach a turtle. We would protect these animals at all costs. Because on the high tides, when the tide comes up, this area here will be flooded, right? So when the sea turtle lays her egg, the nest requires a constant temperature. And if we recognize that this nest is in a real bad spot, we choose a spot further inland on the beach that's stable. And then we would evaluate if the eggs were able to hatch because of us moving them. And in both cases, we're always right. Dumb turtle can't even pick the right spot. So as the villagers began to benefit from the tourism that turtle conservation was creating, they saw that the turtle was worth more to them alive than dead. The children really love sea turtles. We educate them, but we involve them. And by so doing, we get them to a level of interest where they want to become actively involved. When we first started this conservation work, we would encounter at the height of the nesting season 30, 40 turtles. Mm -hmm. Now we encounter over 500. That's, that's significant. Cool. Some people argue, well, that's nature. Leave them. Why protect them? But remember, humans have to intervene sometimes to help nature keep existing. You gotta think, you know, 500 of those go down the beach into the water. How many are gonna survive to adulthood? Two, three, four, maybe less? It's crazy. Sound is everything. Sound to whales is everything. It's their hands. These are animals with the biggest brain on Earth and the most powerful sonic apparatus. They spend a lot of their time deep down. They're, they're diving for an hour at a time in darkness. Just like a submarine is echolocating, they're kind of... They ping a signal out, and then they wait for that signal to bounce off something and come back as the signal. And from that information, they could get an idea of what's there. That's really cool. They constantly click, and uh, that, that click sometimes can be really loud, and uh, you can feel it in your body. It's like uh, going to a DJ and uh, feeling that bass. Once I had an experience with a sperm whale, it clicked, my ears almost like bounced back. It's really an amazing feeling, you know? That is so amazing. You don't develop a huge, complicated brain if you're not using it. Whales have little channels of communicating where they could talk to each other hundreds of kilometers away using sound. Sperm whales make clicks in sort of rhythmic patterns that we call codas. Coda. Any family might have 20 to 25 different coda patterns that they use when they're having conversations with each other. And some of them are unique to different places in the world. In the Eastern Caribbean, they make a lot of what we call a one plus one plus three. That sounds kind of like this. And that's only ever been recorded in the Caribbean. And it's been identical for the last 35 years. No way, These are way, really different dude. ways of life that are being labeled by these coda patterns. In the same way that human language is kind of a shorthand for where you come from. Of course. You can make a lot of missteps when traveling simply by speaking incorrectly or introducing yourself differently. Do you hug? Do you shake hands? Do you bow? And a growing concern has to do with the noise that Talk we're putting into the ocean. Everything we do impacts everything they're doing. 
the sound is causing high levels of stress in animals like this. No one wants to live at a rock concert. You can imagine trying to have your home inside an arena while some metal band is playing. And that's yeah, increasingly that's... what the ocean feels like. That makes me sad. Humans, we... We ruin literally everything. Everything. All right, let's hop in the, the captain's seat here, see what we've got going on. Probably gonna catch up with the with the old sis back home, talk to Irina here. Since there's no dive today, I'm going to lose myself in the wet lab to work on those samples you sent up from the brine pool. Hey, have you listened to my daughter's track? Interesting, right? I just don't like her, I'm sorry. Mirai, remember the tag we found on the turtles? I put it out on the network and I got the strangest message back. I'm gonna take a tender to a small island nearby and check it out. I'll explain everything later. Still no mapping drone, by the way. Okay, so Andre's on to something and then we've got Rin here. Hey, it's me. Nana didn't qualify for the study. Doctor says we missed the window. Mm. Whatever that means. Hard to tell what she remembers now. It's tough. Not sure my head's 100% there with school. Honestly, seems like a waste of money. Anyway, see you. That's, that's hard. I think we may have, may have received a couple, a couple new videos it sounded like. We get some new intel, let me check our pad here. The alien world of brine pools. Brine pools are amazing habitat. I'd never heard of this it's before this video. on the bottom of the ocean. And it's the surreal seascape. Chemically, each one of them is unique. These brines undoubtedly contain bacteria, archaea, and viruses that are unknown to science. We know that they're incredibly rich in undescribed life forms. They have the perfect cocktail, the perfect recipe for life. These sites aren't just salty, they can be violent, characterized by eruptions and incredibly unstable conditions. So to live in them, you have to not only be hardy, but you have to be able to endure constantly changing conditions because not one day is the same. The organisms that live there, they undergo a constant biological warfare with each other to dominate the environment, to survive in the system. The biochemicals that they produce to do that biological warfare are applicable to curing diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's. That's crazy. They produce antibiotics and antivirals that can also be used to improve human health. And we drop targets as we go, so we know exactly where we sample. Exploring these habitats is absolutely necessary because the metabolic potential there has the capacity to change the way we think about medicine, to change the way we think about antibiotics based on our knowledge that we gain from studying these incredible environments in the deep sea. One of the harshest environments on Earth, and it's gonna teach us ways that we can live better up here. That's pretty cool. Squishy robot fingers. Imagine if I was sent in to go study the Mona Lisa, and I come in with a pair of snippers, and I'm like, I'm gonna need to cut this baby up a little bit to see what kind of chemical composition is going on there. Like, you wouldn't do that, right? We don't have to kill these animals. We don't have to kill to understand. If we could do a single cell, that means we don't need to kill 20,000 animals to be able to oh, really understand that one. We could do our work much more non-invasively. So we are working uh, this year on a new project to deploy uh, tags on orcas. We need to learn more about uh, the diet and how they use the habitat. So by deploying those tags, we get the information we need. It is the least invasive method, it is suction cups. So it is not a scratch on the whale afterwards, which is something we really like. Nice. In the deep sea, we use these like robotic claws from the oil and gas industry that gets you the sample, but this is so archaic. So we've been designing something called squishy robot fingers, which are ways to be gentle when we study the deep sea. It's like a claw machine. But I think we could even take this another level. There's some organism, we quickly encase it. It's like a medical checkup. We give it a swab to get its genome. We image it from all directions. We open it up, the animal goes away, and we have more information than we've ever had before. These animals are Mona Lisa's. Our perception of them should change. We should be more delicate. 
That truly is pretty incredible, man. I love this. Like I said, I love that I'm learning new stuff as we go along. It looks like we've got four more videos to unlock and a couple more dives. I think we're going to be taking that on in the next episode. So, okay. hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys there.